Good morning, welcome to Redeemer Church Online. My name's Rodney. My name is Adlight. And it's great to be with you this morning. Adlight, we've just had half term. How's that been for you? It's been, it's been nice, yeah. It's been nice and we've been, we've been enjoying the nice weather, so. Yeah, it's been really good, hasn't it, this yeah. week? Yeah, fantastic. it's been fun. Yeah. And um, of course, this coming Friday, uh, we have the Euro starting. What, what, now, what team are you supporting? 
We just want to know. I've got no choice. It's got to be England. It's got to be my England. Ado my adopted home, yes, it will be England. Okay. What yeah. about you? Yeah, yeah, well, we'll be following the usual England as well. Absolutely. Good, good, good. good. <laughs> okay, anyway, so let me <laughs> move on speedily and tell you what's coming up uh, this morning. Uh, we have a check-in that we usually have. So we have Angela checking in. She's a member of our Redeemer family. And um, we're continuing our devoted series. And uh, Joel is going to be talking about being devoted to the breaking of bread. And then we have Theo who will be leading us in a time of worship. And then after the worship, we're going to be breaking bread ourselves. And so uh, we're, we're, we're set up already. We've got our wine here. We've got our bread there already separated out. Uh, socially distanced in the bowl and um, but you might want to get bread and wine where you are at home um, or juice of course if, if that's uh, what you would prefer so that you can join in and we'll we'll take you through that um, after the worship let's start with a scripture from um, 2 Corinthians 3 verse, um, verse 17 now the Lord is a spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is there is freedom and we who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory, are being transformed into his likeness with ever increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. Um, yeah, let us, let us pray. Dear God, Father, we just come to you this morning because we know there is freedom in your name. Father, we just come to you because Lord, we long for your Spirit. And this morning, Lord Jesus, I just pray that Father, we wanna be transformed into just into the likeness of your son jesus christ we want to be transformed to be more like your son lord father i just pray that will you touch each and every one of us right now this morning father we welcome your presence amen Breaks the power of sin and darkness His love is mighty and so much stronger The King of glory, the King above all kings She shakes the whole earth with holy thunder And leaves us breathless in awe and wonder The King of glory, the King above all kings Amazing grace, this is unfailing love, that you would take my place, that you would bear my cross, you would lay down your life, that I would be set free, oh, oh Jesus I sing for all that you've done for me. Brings our chaos back into order. Who makes the orphan a son and daughter? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who rules the nations with truth and justice? Shines like the sun in all of its brilliance. The King of glory, the King above all kings. Amazing grace, this is unfailing love, that you would take my place, that you would bear my cross, you would lay down your life, that I would be set free, Jesus I sing for all that you've done for me. The Lamb who was slain, worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain, worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain, worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain, 
Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You would lay down your life. That I would be set free. Oh, oh Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Angela, it's lovely to see you on Zoom. I think we first met on Zoom actually, didn't we? We did indeed. It was quite a long time before we actually met in person, I think. It was, yeah. So tell me, how did you come to be part of Redeemer? I was looking for a church at the time. So I'd been around several. Um, I went to what was then Jubilee and went around a few others and then went back to Jubilee. Okay. Um, really, I, I felt that was where the Lord was directing me. Okay. And so that's, that's why I went back. And then, of course, we, I, that was January 2020. And then we went into lockdown. Um, and so I was at Jubilee. That's where I was. And I went into a planting group because I knew Joel was very insistent that you know, people should have support during the pandemic, which actually was great. And it was a brilliant way for me to meet new people because you weren't going to meet them any other way. <laughs> yeah, not really, no. <laughs> in the church. Yeah. It was a good way of, of meeting others in the church. So that's really been great for me. Mm. And so how have things gone for you during the pandemic? What was it been like? I suppose, like most people, up and down. There have been some not very good things. There have been some really good things. Um, lockdown during the winter was not was never going to be good for anybody because of the mm. short days, long evenings, and you can't even go late night shopping unless you queue up outside a supermarket. So that wasn't going to work. Um, so that that was not good. But other things have been great. Other things have been really good. What's more been time. good? <laughs> What's been good? Well, more more time. We've had more time. We haven't been. Uh, you know nobody's going to knock on the door and even if they do they can't come in <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. so it's you know it's there's just been a sense of um not being rushed over things i suppose mm -hmm. which which has been good okay and what has kept you going spiritually then during this time the word of god it, I mean, I just think that whether we believe this pandemic is a result of God's judgment or not, he has allowed it. And if he's allowed it, why has he allowed it? Um, is he trying to get our attention? Um, mm. but because we've had, or not, not everybody, I get that, but I've had a lot more time. I've been able to spend a lot of time in the word of God, meditating, reading, studying, and it's not something I think that comes naturally. I don't think we all pick up our Bibles and say, oh, yippee, and the bishopers. Um, but we can ask God to give us a love for his word. And I think he wants us to love his word. That's how we get to know him. That's how we get to know Jesus. Mm. So if we ask for a love for his word, why wouldn't he give it to us? And he has given it to me. And I'm really, really grateful for that. Um, I, you know, I just think it's fantastic. I love it, but I haven't always loved it. Mm. 
Oh, well, there's hope for all of us then. Thank you. Yes, there's hope for any, anybody. You can all anybody can ask God for a love for His Word, mm. and I can't see that He wouldn't give it because it's what He wants. It's the one way we we get to know Him, get to know what He wants, what He requires of us, what pleases Him, what doesn't please Him. Mm. Um, we've it's we've got the actual words spoken by Almighty God. We've got the actual words spoken by Jesus, and we can read them whenever we want. It's brilliant. <laughs> well, thanks so much, Angela. It's been lovely to catch up with you. And we do enjoy being in a small group with you as well. So and getting to hear some of this wisdom that you're learning from the word of God. <laughs> <laughs> enjoy your day. I will. Thank you, Carrie. See you soon. Bye. Bye. Yeah, this morning was, it was so nice to hear from Angela it was, yeah, during it? our yes. check-in. Yes. Yeah? Yeah, and so now we're going to have our next in the Devoted series, uh, and Joel is speaking about being devoted to the breaking of bread, and then afterwards we're going to have a time of worship led by Theo. Acts 2, verses 42 to 47. The Fellowship of the Believers. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favour with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. Hey, good morning. It is great to be with you. Thanks for tuning in. We are continuing our devoted series this week, uh, Community of the Spirit. And we've really enjoyed last week, Matt Wormsley, who leads Maybridge Church in Worthy. He spoke to us on Fellowship week before that. Ali Scott, who leads a church up in Chester Street in County Durham called Redeemer as well. He spoke to us on uh, the, being devoted to the Apostles' teaching. And today we're looking at the breaking of bricks in this. In this book, uh, the first part of Acts here in Acts chapter 2, the passage we've just had read, it tells us that community life was broken down into four parts for the early church. And they say they were devoted to the apostles' teaching, they were devoted to fellowship, they were devoted to the breaking of bread, and they were devoted to praying. Now that's a pretty great start for us as we look to launch into the Guildhall Centre. What we want to be as a church, we want to be a community that's devoted to these things. Um, and so you heard in that passage, they say, they say that word devoted, they devoted themselves. And when we read Acts, we find that six times throughout the book of Acts. And devotion speaks of persistence, it speaks of persevering. Not, it's not a one-off thing, but it's a thing that keeps on going and pushes through, even when maybe uh, things are a bit difficult, when things get awkward or uncomfortable. And in our culture, that's kind of an alien concept when we, we live in a culture of you try it, and if you don't like it, even if it's just for a, a, a moment, then you just go and you do something else, right? You do what's right for you. Don't worry about what anyone else says. You don't need to, you don't need to persevere necessarily so much with things. You just do what's right for you. Try once, it's not for you, I'll move on. But here it says they devoted themselves to these things. And we've, we've called this series Devoted because as a church, we want to persist, we want to persevere, we want to prevail in these areas. Because how that's, that's how we want community life to, to be established and to flourish and to have an effect on the people and the places around us. And so in Acts 22, they love doctrine. They love scripture. They love the deep partnership that they enjoyed in the gospel. They love to call out to God together in prayer. And they also love to eat together. They love breaking bread together. And as they did this, they remembered and celebrated through bread and wine all that Jesus had accomplished on the cross. And that's why the church over the last 2,000 years has broken bread and drank wine or fruit juice 
uh, to reenact what Jesus instructs. And that's done in all sorts of different ways and with all sorts of regularity depending on dom denominations and uh, the centuries that have gone by. And that's what we're looking at today for the next 10, 15 minutes. And what I want to say to you, church, is that, is that we, you and me, and all of, our, all of our mess and all of our weakness, we're invited to come and have a seat at the table. In this meal that we're looking at today, we call it bread and wine, it's called Holy Communion, Communion, the Lord's Supper, Mass, whatever you may have heard it called, we're invited to come and partake. We're offered a seat at the family meal time. I wonder if you've ever experienced that, that feeling of just being on the outside of something. When you're looking in, you're peering through the window, you're cold, you're sad, you're lonely, and you're looking through and seeing something that you, you wish you could be part of. Have you ever seen uh, Scrooge or the Christmas Carol where Scrooge is looking through the window, it's cold outside, the snow's falling, and he's looking through at this party that's taking place that he wasn't, that he is, he's not a part of. And he's the, he's the outsider. Maybe you've felt like that before. Maybe you've never felt like that before. Maybe you've somehow always been on the inside. But I imagine most of us have had that feeling at some point. Maybe even in church. Maybe at work you have those feelings of just not, not quite fitting in. Well, God, he invites you to come in from the cold, to not be standing at the window, but come in to the house and sit at the table. He invites you to come in and find joy and rest and peace and love and a place to belong. You're invited this morning. So when we talk about bread and wine, it's something we do because it's what Jesus instructs us to do as a church family together. In Matthew 26, verse 26 says, Now as they were eating, Jesus took bread and after blessing it, broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took a cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, Drink of it, all of you. But this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. You see, this is part of what we do as our worship. It's this tangible sign that you can feel between your fingers, that you can taste in your mouth of the presence of Jesus. It's this physical reenactment of our redemption, of our rescue from slavery into freedom and new life. And it centres us as a church around the gospel, around Jesus. It forms part of our worship together and to draw us more into worship. Like whatever else we do on a Sunday when we gather, we want to be God first, we want to be gospel centred, we want to be mission focused and this should help us fuel that. The danger is that some of us who've grown up in church, uh, with some of us who've grown up in church, is that we see it as something that maybe we just bolt on because it's something that the church has done for thousands of years. Or maybe we think it's a bit boring or a bit legalistic or a bit exclusive or a bit too prescribed. We don't want any set liturgy, which is just like an order, a form of worship. But whether we like it or not, we have a liturgy. It might not quite look the same as a church 100 years ago or 300 years ago, but we have a set way of doing things, a pattern of worship. And there's not a negative thing. Andrew Wilson says in his book, Spirit and Sacrament, which I highly recommend, he says that liturgy is not merely neutral, but positive. It is not just inevitable, but powerful. It can train us, shape us, and reorient our desires. And we see modern liturgies in all sorts of places. Right, if you've ever been to a football match, you will have seen a form of liturgy, a way of doing things. Like people get ready for the gathering, right, by putting on their appropriate clothing, whether that's a, a scarf or a hat or the team's shirt. And they walk in through the car park or the grounds and they look up at the cathedral or the stadium. And after standing in their queue for their pint and their pie, they break bread together with the same group of friends and for family that they chat with each week before the game before walking out into the worship centre or stadium. Where there are moments of silence, remembering the dead, there are moments of applause for people's lives, uh, there are singing songs, there are chanting, there are raising hands in the air to worship, chanting to the God of football. For in sport, they recognise the importance of patterns of behaviour and how these habits, they form people's hearts. 
People will give their time, they give their weeknights, they give their weekends, they travel hundreds of miles, thousands of miles over a year spending an incredible amount of money at the old surf football. And for, for some, it's their form of church, it's their family, it's a place where they belong. And this pattern of worship is familiar, it's repetitive, and they love it. And we want, we want something similar to that. We, we want this to be a place where people, they want to spend their time, they want to give their time to. They want to give their money to, where they love, where they feel like this is family, this is a place to belong. But we're calling, some, we're calling people to something better, to something that will give true peace, something that will give true joy and satisfaction. And so it's the same with bread and wine. As we form these habits, as we go to the table and break bread and pour the wine, however it may look, we're making a statement of our need for Jesus. So why do we do it? Why do we do it? Four reasons. We do it as a, as a means of looking backwards. Right? It keeps us focused on Jesus and the incredible salvation that he has won for us at the cross. By breaking bread again and again and again, we are reminded that the cross is everything. Right? That we have been redeemed by Jesus. It is the best news that we, me and you, could ever receive. Right, you and I we were dead and we were without hope. <laughs> the broken body of Jesus is capable of dealing with all of our sins. The Bible says his blood washes us whiter than snow. We are forgiven and free. It covers our sins past, present and future. This is good news. But we also look forward. Right? We do, it says in 1 Corinthians 12, it says, do this until he comes. Right, there is a day coming, praise God, when we will drink wine with Jesus in the kingdom at the wedding supper of the Lamb. That's what it says in Revelation. There is a day coming when we will drink wine. Like it says in Matthew 26, I will not drink again of this fruit of the wine until that day when I drink it with you in my Father's kingdom. We look forward to the day when that will happen. Right? We celebrate that Jesus has won the victory, has won the victory. So when we come to the table and eat, we partake as we receive the broken body. We say with Paul, like Paul says in Romans 8, who can separate me from the love of God in Christ? Can tribulation, so tribulation or stress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword. Jesus has won the victory for us and we remember this at the cross. We're saying that despite what we face right now, despite COVID, we say Jesus is bigger than that and we choose to worship, we choose to be thankful for what God has done for us. Just as every joy in this life is a hint at the fullness of joy in the next, when we come to the table, bread and wine is just a foretaste, this regular reminder that there is a better meal coming. So as you take it, as you take it today, if you're taking it at home today, if you've got your bread and your wine ready, or if you are in on, uh, if you're in person in the Gilborn, as we take it today, we look past the uncertainty of the next few weeks or months or years, and we look to Jesus. We look to the, the author and perfecter of our faith. Number three, we look inward. Right? So what does it mean to look inward, to examine ourselves? It means uh, doing whatever we can to ensure we don't eat or drink in an unworthy manner, unworthy manner, as it says in 1 Corinthians. Right? To examine yourself is to come face to face with, with your unworthiness, to come face to face with my unworthiness, to come and take part at this, at this meal table, to come and have a seat at this table. It's not to get lost in like a, a self-indulgent wallowing, but it's an opportunity to see our sin, to confess it, and to rejoice that it has been nailed to the cross. And number four, we look outward. Right, the last direction is to look all around you, to take notice of the people participating in the community meal. So if you're on site in the Gilborn this morning, you can look around and you can see people who are different from you. You can see the different ages and races and stories. There are people there with whom you share nothing in common. Other than Jesus. And through that, because of that, you are bonded forever by the same Spirit. Right? The, 
the, the supper, the Lord's Supper, the bread and wine, it symbolizes this beauty of unity. And so when we, we can gather back together, whether that's July or August or September, as a, as a church family, all in one, in one room on a Sunday, we can treasure that moment. So if you're online doing it in your homes today, that's fantastic, and we can, we're doing it together still, but there's something special about being uh, in person, looking around and seeing as a church family come into the table and remembering, looking back, looking forward, looking in, and then looking around. And so in a minute or two, we're going to celebrate together. We're going to remember what Jesus has done for us, coming together as a family. Even if you're watching at home, this is a family thing, and we can look forward to the day when we will drink with Jesus in the new kingdom. If you're hearing this for the first time, you're not a follower of Jesus, then you are invited to. Romans, 9, uh, Romans 10, verse 9, it says, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And if you want to pray that prayer this morning, then you can pray that, and you can, you can take part in bread and wine. You, you're invited this morning to come and sit at the table. You're, you're invited to the family meal time. In a moment, we're going to uh, take bread and wine together. Rod and Abba are going to lead us in that. And then we are going to respond as we worship through bread and wine. We're going to respond by worshiping in song together. I'm just going to pray for you. God, I thank you. You invite us to come to the table, not because of anything that we have done, but because of what you have done. And we remember that as we, as we break the bread, and as we drink the wine, remember the sacrifice that you made, the price that you paid on our behalf. And God, we look forward to the day when we can celebrate with you in the new heavens and the new earth, the victory that you have won for us right now. And God, we just we just take a moment just to look inward and just to search ourselves and recognize our unworthiness. And we're just so thankful that we're part of a church family, whether we're at home or whether we're in person. God, thank you for the people that make up your church. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus, we honor your name. is the highest name of all. And Jesus, oh power and glory, belong to you only. the 
Holy One, you're the risen King, far above all gods, far above all things, every knee will bow, every tongue confess, Christ is Lord, you're the King of glory, strong and mighty, and over
Jesus, thank you for your love. Thank you for your deep love for me, for all of us, God. I thank you that you love me so much and that you died for me on the cross. I thank you for everything you gave for me, everything you won for me. You won the victory for me, for, for all of us. I thank you that it's accessible for anyone, for anyone who calls on your name who believes in you and I thank you for that Father I thank you that you sent Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus fantastic thank you so much Joel and Theo for serving us so well and obviously Joel talked about the importance of breaking bread as a church and so that's what we're going to do now and I hope you're going to join us at home hopefully you've had a chance to get um, some some wine or fruit juice and some bread uh, so you can join in now so um, let's just focus our minds now on this and you know Jesus um, he took some bread and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and um, he said take and eat this is my body but you know this wasn't the first time uh, in the Bible that there's an invitation to take and eat you see in Genesis chapter 3 um, Eve is invited by the serpent to take and eat the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and as Adam and Eve took and ate that fruit what happened is uh, it was a catastrophe actually because mankind fell and sin entered the world and, and, and Adam and Eve and of course the whole of mankind we became separated from God in that moment and there's a barrier of sin that came into, into the world in that moment but here now Jesus comes as the new Adam and he offers us a return to intimacy uh, with God by inviting us once again to take and eat but this time we're taking and eating of his body what a fantastic invitation that is that is that we've got and it, it's a hugely symbolic thing therefore that we do right now as we break bread and we eat uh, and we remember the death uh, and of Jesus and his giving of his body for us so what we're doing in this moment when we're eating is that we're declaring that the curse of sin has now been reversed in Christ and he was cursed in our place and it means we are now blessed instead of being cursed it symbolizes a new covenant that God has made with us so all together now, why don't we just, in our homes, just take this bread and eat it right now and thank God. And that's what we're going to do here right now. Dear Father, Father, we just thank you for your bread. Father, we thank you for our aim. What it, symbolize, what it symbolizes, Father, it just reminds us about you. Father, your body on the cross that cleanses our sins. Father, we just, we just come to you and look at the cross. Father, we thank you for all that you've done for us. In Jesus' name, amen. And of course, Jesus invites us as well to uh, a drink from the cup. Uh, this is what Matthew 26 says. Jesus says, this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Isn't that incredible? When he said that, poured out for many, he meant you and I, you know, where you are now, where I am now. He's poured out his blood for us. That's incredible, isn't it? And so not only is the curse reversed, 
um, there is now a new unbreakable commitment that God has made to us, to you and to me, and it's signed and sealed in the blood of Jesus, in the blood of his Son. So for Christians, this is a great way to renew afresh our commitment to Jesus. So why don't you do that right now as we just drink um, and we remember Christ's blood shed for us. Let's just make that fresh commitment to him right now. Yeah, Jesus, we thank you so much that you shed your blood for us. And it is a very precious and solemn thing that was done. And, and yet it's a wonderful celebratory thing as well, that the blood of Christ has cleansed me, cleansed Adlite, cleansed all those who are watching who are Christians, have cleansed us of our sin, that there is a new covenant now in your blood, signed and sealed, unbreakable, eternal covenant um, that will never be replaced and never, um, never be removed, that, that is there for all eternity and it secures our salvation for all eternity. And so we say thank you Jesus, thank you so much. Your precious blood was shed for us. Thank you Lord. And you know Jesus promises us, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry and he who believes in me will never go thirsty. And so wherever you're at with God right now, as you've joined in this incredibly symbolic moment, together we've partaked in this moment together, you know, Jesus promised to you is that you will never spiritually hunger and thirst again. He will satisfy you. He will always satisfy you. He will always be enough for you. And that's just incredible, isn't it? Yeah, thank you, Lord. We're now coming to the end of our meeting together. We have loved hosting you. Um, please follow us on Facebook and Instagram and at redeemer.co.uk. Planting groups, um, they'll be meeting throughout the week. So it's a great way of us um, just connecting as a family. And then also lunchtime prayer is back at Wednesday, 12.30 on Zoom. Redeemer Kids, there'll be Redeemer Kids next Sunday at 9.30. And also we are back online at 10 a.m. next Sunday. But of course we can, we can meet in person at Gilborn Centre at 10.30 every Sunday morning. Please join us and please remember to sign in if you want to join us. And unfortunately there won't be any um, kids service due to the restrictions. And lastly, if you still want to uh, sign up for helping us on Sunday mornings, there's still spaces for the Sunday morning teams on our website. Please check our website. And thank you very much. Yep, thank you very much. Goodbye. Bye.